Hey everyone, welcome back to Alf's Mustang Garage. Uh, today we're working on a super sweet 66 289 Mustang Coupe. Um, doing some tune-up stuff and I kind of had this little opportunity to work on, you know, a, a mostly untouched car. Um, very, very unaltered um, inside and out. So this is, uh, you know, 66 289, still has the original smog pump uh, em emission system on there from the California cars, um, but it also has factory ignition points. Um, the entire ignition system is all factory. And, you know, I don't get to work on too many of these anymore because most of the stuff that comes into me is, you know, converted to, you know, Petronix, electronic type of style or the distributors change out completely. Um, it's just kind of like a more modern thing, but so less and less I'm working on you know, ignition points. So I have an older video, super older video, one of our first that we did that, you know, I replaced the points and gapped them and, you know, it gets lots of views, but like, I think it's pretty old and I need to like update this video. So I'm gonna take this opportunity to kind of show you how this system works, um, how to gap it. And then once we have this engine up and running, I'm gonna show you how to really fine tune it with a dwell meter and show you what that's all that's about. First thing I'm gonna kind of dive into is just kind of like how this system works, okay? So I'm gonna break out the old book and kind of show you some diagrams. Um, sometimes understanding how something works is gonna be uh, helpful when it comes to like diagnosing like a problem. Like for example, if you have like an off, uh, an off idle acceleration and it, and it kind of stumbles a little bit, um, what's the number one thing that gets blamed? Justin? Carburetor. Carburetor, oh, it's, a, it's the carburetor. And I'm just, I don't understand it, so I'm just gonna pull it off, and I'm gonna throw on an Edelbrock manifold with the four barrel, and I'm still gonna have problems, right? Because we don't quite understand how all this stuff works, okay? Well, usually it's something simple. Usually it's, you know, maybe a multitude of things, so that's why I'm doing an entire tune-up on this engine. Um, but this video is dedicated to the ignition system factory ignition points or otherwise known as breaker points okay so this is how it works from the battery you feed the ignition switch you turn the key it then directs that power to your coil this is the primary windings in the coil it's going to go through the coil and out the negative side and it's going to be positive and negative okay so it goes through and then it goes to the distributor, and that's where it goes to the breaker points, okay? So, and this is like a little more detailed kind of diagram, okay? You come inside your primary windings, right? And you come out the negative side of the coil, and then you go to the distributor, okay? Now, now that in itself is not what's producing the spark, which goes to the distributor, and then goes as a spark plug. Okay, what actually creates the spark is when your breaker points open up, okay? What happens is when you energize this coil, that's what they refer to as dwelling, okay? The coil is energizing, okay? So while it's energizing, it's creating an electromagnetic field around the coil internally inside, okay? And when you break that connection, the the, the field will collapse. What that does is induce um, a high voltage, low amperage uh, spark comes out of the secondary windings and then to the distributor, which then goes through the rotor and through the spark plug and to whatever you know, cylinder you happen to be on. And this just does this continuously as the engine is rotating around, right? I hope that makes sense, okay? But what is creating that break point. That's the point. So let me show you how that works and that's why setting this up is very important. All right, so here's our, what we, we already installed a brand new set of ignition points, okay? Uh, so that install is pretty straightforward. You just have like a screw, a screw, a screw, and then there's two wires that are attached to this nut right here, okay? You get them all installed, you leave them loose, and this here is adjustable, okay? 
So, but what I'm gonna kind of show you before I get into the adjustment is just kind of show you the flow of electricity, okay? So right now, I have the key in the on position, okay? And that's gonna direct electrical power here. Let's see, I got my battery voltage, almost 12, right? Let's set that up right there. And now you connect it to the positive side of the coil. And then it's gonna come out the other side of the coil. As you can see, we have that same voltage right there, okay? Now, some of you may be aware, and you might be thinking, well, why is it showing you know, almost 12 volts? Shouldn't there be a resistance wire in this circuit? Yes, there is. Yes, there should be a resistance wire. How come it's not showing less than 12? Um, it's showing slightly less than 12, probably because my battery's not fully charged. Okay, but you're probably wondering why is it not showing 10 or 8 volts? Well, because the circuit's not complete. If the circuit's not complete, then the voltage will not be consumed and you're still gonna get a full voltage reading, okay? So, but that's a whole separate subject. So let's not go off any rabbit trails here. So now we're going through the coil, right? We then come through this wire that's coming from the coil and it's connected right to this post of the breaker points. Now this breaker points now is showing the voltage. Like this is now energized through here, okay? Now this is where I'm hoping you can be able to see this on camera pretty well. But right here there's a gap, right? So right now that gap is open and I have 12 volts right here at, at the point of this breaker point, right? And it is open, okay? Because this cam, you see this cam right here, there's eight individual lobes for each cylinder of the engine, right? You have a little tab right here, and as the engine rotates, it's gonna rotate counterclockwise, and it's gonna pivot these points, and it's gonna open them up, and that is thus breaking the connection to the coil, collapsing that field that I referenced, and inducing voltage in the secondary windings, and that is what creates the spark. All right, so I just have my screwdriver in here to kind of like open and close the points so you can kind of see what's happening, but I'm going to close the contact, and now as they open, you're gonna see and hear that little spark. I don't know if you can see that. I'll try and zoom in for you, and you can kind of see that. So what that's that's what's when you're pulling apart, when you're pulling apart, like the spark like kind of wants to jump and wants to hold on to each other because essentially this is a direct path to ground and electricity loves ground. Okay. So it's gonna try and hold on to that for all of its life. Okay. But what that what happens is you're gonna, you're gonna create a little carbon buildup every time that happens. So imagine you know your engine's rotating at an idle at 700 rotations per minute you're just firing it like crazy and you build up some carbon on there fairly rapidly you know within like you know five or six thousand miles of runtime or whatever um so they're a little they're like a lot more needy than your electronic stuff nowadays um you got to get in there and kind of deburr it because what it does what it does when you create a layer of carbon the gap is now getting smaller if that makes sense and so now your dwell time is off and the dwell time is how long the coil is charging for. That's, wh that's why you set the gap because you're setting how long that coil is gonna charge or otherwise dwell. I'm gonna back up a little bit. Um, earlier I was explaining about the resistance wire and why it still reads you know, 12 volts here. Like why is it still read 12 volts? It's going through a resistance wire. Isn't that supposed to rob like some voltage? Um, yes, but when your circuit's not complete, and this kind of goes for any kind of electrical circuit, um, your voltage is not consumed, okay? So if it's not consumed, then you're still gonna read full voltage, right? But as soon as I contact these points and I complete the circuit, watch what happens. Bam, there it is. We're gonna set the gap, okay? So we wanna set the pivot point, which is right here on your ignition points. 
you want to set it so it's right on the top of one of these cam lobes, okay? It could be any one of them. There's eight, okay? So there's two ways to achieve that. You can turn your engine by hand, and this will turn counterclockwise until it lines up, or you can loosen your distributor and just kind of turn it that way as well, okay? So we're going to line that up. Hopefully you can see that pretty good. Okay, so you have this little slot that's just like perfect for a standard size, you know, flathead screwdriver. Okay, and you get it, you're gonna get it in here. You're gonna leave these screws kind of slightly loose here and here, right? And then you can adjust the gapping. You see, see that gap right there? And you're gonna set how far the gap will open up when you're on the high point of the cam, right? This is setting the dwell time, okay? Now, you're not gonna set the dwell perfect in the, you know, there's a specification for the gap and you gotta use a feeler gauge, okay? And that specification is 17 thousandths, if my memory serves me correctly, right? So this is kind of like a feel thing. Now this is like obviously way too much gap, right? So we're gonna close that, we're gonna close that up right there. And now we're gonna check the feel of that and it should be like a slight drag, and that's even too big right there. Close her up just a little bit more like this. And that is a slight drag. I think we're really close. I'm gonna open it back up. Just a hair. Uh, I like the feel of that. This is a feel thing. This is obviously nothing I can really teach over the video camera. Um, it's a slight drag. We're going to fine tune this uh, down the road when we put the dwell meter on here when the engine's back up and running. But your 17 thousandths gap is just to get you in the ballpark. Now, if you don't have a dwell meter, it's fine. Um, your engine's going to run great on this. You're going to be, you have a margin of error, is what I'm trying to say. Um, but that's like the specification um, and the margin of error is kind of like your feel might be different than my feel. So uh, so I like that right there. I'm going to lock her down, verify my gap once it's actually locked down and make sure nothing moved and then uh, we'll move on. Okay, so I'm going to hold the position with my one screwdriver and get a second screwdriver to lock down these flat heads right here. Now in case you're kind of wondering or in case you notice, there's no vacuum advance on here. The reason why is because I'm replacing it. <laughs> and I'm doing a second video on the vacuum advance unit. So anyways, um, that's why I have this wedge here to kind of keep it because without the vacuum advance unit on, the whole mechanism just kind of pivots. So anyways, she's locked down. Verify my feeler gauge because sometimes it'll change just by, just by tightening it up and and yeah she feels great it's a nice slight drag on it and from here we'll get the engine running put the dwell meter on it i'll show you what all that's about and um, we'll fine tune this sucker to be perfect okay so i hope all that kind of makes sense it's kind of like a lot of information to kind of throw at you for something so simple and basic but um hopefully that's a little better video than what i've done in the past now i am going to continue this video and, and put the dwell meter on i understand the average person probably doesn't have a dwell meter, okay? Um, so if this is kind of where you're at and you don't have a dwell meter, you set that gap to, you know, whatever your car specifications is, uh, mine is 17 thousandths, um, you're, you're gonna be good to go. Like your engine's gonna run great. Um, it's gonna be fine, but now you should be able to know how to get in there with confidence and, and uh, reset your gaps. Even if you're just kind of like pulling them out and filing them down smooth and putting them back in, reset it check your timing and um should be good to go but hopefully that's a good basic tune-up kind of tutorial for you and um we'll move on to the dual meter and i'll kind of kind of show you how that works but so we got the engine all back together we got it running so we're on the ignition points we're going to be setting the dwell angle okay so what we got to do now i understand that not everybody's going to have like one of these fancy timing lights but um, we have one of these super nice, fancy snap-on timing lights, and it's actually gonna have the capability of showing us a dwell angle, okay? So we're gonna start up the engine, uh, see what the dwell's sitting at, and then we're gonna make some fine-tune adjustments from there.
Okay, so right now I'm showing a dwell angle of 22. Okay, so I'm gonna jump to the specifications on here. My 66 Mustang, 289 engine. It's gonna want a dwell angle of 26 to 31 degrees. Okay, and we're sitting at we're sitting at 22. Okay, so what I like to do is um, get that fine tuned. Uh, I'll show you how to do that. If we want our dwell angle to increase, right now we're sitting at 21. If we want to increase it to 26 to 31. What that means is we need to uh, shorten the gap because that's going to make it be contacted for a longer duration of time. Okay, so let's pop our distributor cap off. Okay, so back when we were just doing the adjustments, we're going to make a very small, fine adjustment here. Okay. Crack this loose, crack this loose, and I want to shorten the gap to increase the dwell. You probably can't tell on camera, but I'm just making a very, very small adjustment on there. And now we're going to start it back up and recheck our dwell. Okay, just a minor adjustment and we're up to 31. So when I make these adjustments, um, I like to be on the smaller end of the spectrum because what happens is as you run this engine, those points, they build up like a carbon buildup on the contacts. So naturally, the gap is gonna like get smaller at the longer you run the engine. So if my range is 26 to 31, um, I'm gonna shoot for that 26. That way as it builds up carbon, it'll get more towards the 31. I hope that kind of makes sense. Uh, so I'm gonna readjust this, even though it's within spec, I'm gonna try and get this sucker to 26. Okay, back in we go. I'm just gonna crack it. Because it's very difficult to make very minor adjustments. So if you just kind of crack them, that way it's like very difficult to actually get this to turn. Now I'm gonna open it up ever so slightly. You probably can't even tell I'm doing anything on camera. Okay, let's recheck it. Okay, so we're sitting at 27. Um, I'm going to call that good because it's like really, really hard to change it by by only one degree. So if we're at, if the spec is 26 to 31 and I'm sitting at 27, I'm gonna call that one good. Just as a reminder, um, the dwell is the amount of time that the point contacts are closed and it's essentially charging the coil. Um, it breaks open and the field collapse induces voltage right out of the coil into the distributor wherever the rotor is pointed it's going to transfer that electricity down whatever spark plug wire is pointed at and that's how the ignition system works so when you get your dwell just right that's when your engine or your i guess ignition system is going to run at its finest so anyways hopefully that was helpful um appreciate you watching appreciate you being here um if you haven't had a chance yet go ahead and subscribe to the channel uh, click the notification bell, like the video, all those little things do go a long way when it comes to helping us to uh, continue creating videos which are hopefully helpful to you guys. Okay, thanks. See ya.